Gonna start it off with some New Japan. Should I do New Japan first? Fuck it, yeah. We'll do New Japan Royal Quest, night one and night two. Only gonna talk about the matches that I really cared about. And the first match I really loved was Shuta Unimo versus Will Ospreay. And this match was interesting because it was the first... I'm pretty sure this was the first match ever that um, Red Shoes, Shooter's dad, was actually refereeing. Which kind of leads to, you know, the Osprey's conspiracy theories and all of that. New Japan officials screwing him and all that stuff. He's basically the conspiracy theorist in, like, uh, remember Jericho back in WCW? But, yeah, we got Shooter versus Will Osprey, two of my favorite guys right there. Uh, Shooter does this cool fucking scoop slam. Like, he, like, he's, he picks him up like a regular scoop slam, holds him in the air, and he kind of just flops him like a flapjack in midair. That was cool. It's a nice running drop kick after that. Uh, Osprey with a running nasty Yakuza kick. Like, he does the kick exactly how Tess used to do his boot. It's crazy because Osprey's not the tallest dude ever, so he just fucking mows these people down with his Yakuza kick. Uh, Osprey is chopping the soul out of Shooter while calling him a pussy the whole time. I kid you not, he just keeps. He called him a pussy like four times. Uh, Hurricanrana by Shooter gets caught in midair with a Liger bomb right in his neck for a uh, near fall. Uh, Shooter goes to push him off the rope. He goes for the ox cutter, but he catch, Shooter catches him in a cutter in midair. Uh, chops in about 20 to 30 Kawada kicks. Shooter's getting pissed off. He's uh, getting his heat back, you know, getting some fire. But ox caught out of nowhere for a near fall. Uh, fucking shooter, you know, comes back with a couple kicks, drop kicks, hits the McGilla cutter, shouts out to the the boy shooter. I think AJ Styles to do that move. It's a really cool move. I've always loved the McGilla cutter, the fucking like spinning neck breaker thing. Uh, Osprey with a pop up, Chelsea's grin, picks him up, Liger bomb right to the neck. He flips him around. This is Osprey's thing now. Sometimes he. Elbows him in the back of the head until basically Red Shoes stops the match. But the Red Shoes stopped the match very early because it was a sun. So they kind of played off that like, oh, Red Shoes, you should have let this going. Because last time this happened with Sonata, Sonata got his orbital bone broken. So, you know, legitly shoot wise too. So they were just like, oh, he's just protecting his son, whatever. So I thought it was a really good story. And I feel like they need to do the rematch and the shooter needs to tell his dad to fuck off. Basically that he's a man. But yeah, this is a very fun match. Then... This was the match that everybody was talking about, and I completely get it. This was one of the very good tag team match. FTR versus Aussie Open for the IWGP World Heavyweight title. I mean, tag team titles. Uh, crowd is going nuts for both teams. You know, we got the usual UK singing and all that stuff. So we get a chop by uh, freaking Davis that slices Dax's chest open. So how does Dax respond? He chops Davis... So hard that his chest gets busted open. So we're both men are bleeding from their chest just from chops. So we're off to a great start. Uh, top rope back suplex by Cash on Fletcher. Uh, nasty brain buster by Fletcher for a near fall. Dax has his three German suplexes. Uh, we get a pop up double team cutter by Aussie Open. I really love that move where uh, fucking he just like gets him in the power slam position. He kind of chucks him in the air and Fletcher catches him with a nasty cutter. Good shit, good shit. Uh, freaking uh, FTR hits the uh, the old world's greatest tag team finisher. They even bring it up, uh, the freaking Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas. The thing where you like leapfrogs over him and like kind of crushes him. Uh, freaking, we got a nice dive there by Cash who doesn't, you know, what happened in the no flips, just fist. But it was a really nice suicide dive. He went like halfway through the ramp. And took out everybody. I was like, Jesus Christ. Dax is busted open hard way. Uh, we get a torture rack airplane spin slam by Davis for a near fall. Slingshot power bomb by Dax. And then the double spike pile driver by FTR for a near fall. Title to the face, but Cash kicks out. I really thought that was it. I really thought Ozzy Open was going to win there. Uh, Cash kicks out of Ozzy Open's second finisher. I forgot what it's called. But uh, now Mark Davis is now busted open. Uh, double sharpshooter by FTR. Uh, they do this really cool spot. I thought they were going to repeat the spot from NXT, but do it on the other guys. But they actually did a cooler spot. Fletcher stops Davis from tapping out and starts slapping the shit out of him, basically saying, you better not fucking tap out. This pisses him off. He gets up. They both get out of both the submissions. Uh, freaking, that was really good stuff. Aussie Open hit the big rig shatter machine. 
on FTR, but then FTR hits their own Shatter Machine for the win. And yeah, what a great match. Uh, Aussie Open, like I said, they're a very fucking good tag team. God, I was just like, these guys are hopefully getting more and more respect on the tag team, bro. That was good shit. And then uh, we get uh, the best match from night two was Zack Sabre Jr. versus Naito. I always love these two guys going at it. They were having a, little, a lot of fun for this match. So this was a match for the number one contendership for the IWGP US title. Uh, feels like Naito has just been extra over again. Like, I feel like they really need to throw a mid-card title on him. And he needs to start doing that thing he was doing where he just throws a title around him. Because I've been seeing a lot of people just kind of like, you know, romanticize about that time of Naito. Even me, I was showing some people. I'm just like, look how cool this guy was. Uh, like I said, Naito's extra over. Hits Don Kilo pose. The crowd explodes. Uh, Naito is playing with Zack. Running in and out of the ring. Not letting him touch him. Zack then tries to go hit a dive, which I laughed. I'm like, I've never seen Zack Sabre Jr. do a high flying move. Then he hits his own Tran Kilo pose where he like sticks both middle fingers out. Uh, then we get to the real match. Zack starts to destroy Naito's arm the whole match and fingers. Naito makes a comeback, uh, getting the crowd to chant Zack's name, which is hilarious. Anytime he was on offense, he's just like, you know, Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, we get a spine buster by Naito for a near fall. Then he hits his back elbows. These things are so vicious looking, man. They're like Kevin Nash's elbows on cocaine. Uh, top rope Frankensteiner by Naito. He starts to really come back. Zack driver out of nowhere for a near fall. Uh, Zach has a fucking submission. He's beat Naito with this before, where he locks in both arms and both legs of somebody in a crazy-looking submission. Uh, this usually tapped out Naito before, but he gets out of it. Uh, freaking Zach Saber then PKs the living hell out of Naito. I thought Naito was going to forget his identity. Uh, Naito gets up. Destino hits another one right after, and that was it. Which, you don't see Naito beating beating Zack Sabre Jr. a lot. Zack Sabre Jr.'s kind of had his number. I think the official standing is now 2-2, two to two, if I am correct. But yeah, that was New Japan uh, Royal Quest Night 1 and Night 2. Really, 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 really fun show. Very fun show. Uh, worth it alone just for the FTR and uh, freaking Aussie Open match for sure.